specific ethnic group united by culture and language and who primarily originate from Middle Eastern countries. Arab is not, repeat, not a racial category. Got it? You can be white, black, brown, and still be Arab. But not all people from the Middle East are Arab and vice versa, like, say, ethnic Persians in Iran. A Muslim is someone who practices Islam, a religion with over 1.7 billion members spanning a vast number of ethnic and cultural identities. The Muslim world actually comprises a multitude of groups that folks often forget, including Iranians, South Asians, North Africans, Indonesians, Black Americans. Islam is not confined to the Middle East, to olive-skinned people, or just people who speak Arabic. But despite the fact that Islam is a religion, not a race, it's vital for us to understand that Islamophobia is racism. If you've been paying attention this far, you might be asking yourself, if Islam isn't a race, then how can Islamophobia be racism? <coughs> and moreover, men shouldn't expect a reward for deciding not to participate in a terrible system of oppression. Or, as many feminists have said before, you don't get a cookie for being a decent human being. <coughs> is a socio-political movement with the central goal of ending sexism and dismantling gender-based oppression. So contrary to common misconceptions, Feminism is not about man-hating or female supremacy. It's important to note that the feminist endeavor, as it's been defined by women like Bell Hooks, does not simply seek equal access for women within current systems of power, but instead seeks to transform those systems and the values associated with them. So where do men fit into all of this? We need to kill all men. I am sick of being a baby factory that produces more men that will just, in the future, subjugate me. So the only answer to that is to kill male babies and um, just kill any man that you see, like in the streets, like any swinging dick, just kill him. Because um, we want the species to go on, but we want it only to go on with women in it. So. That's what we have to do. That's the only way to keep the human race going is with just women. The majority of them are women. So where does that leave them, Mike? With, with respect to what? With, with, oh. <laughs> with respect to the conversation sorry, I'm, that I'm we're sorry, having I'm, I'm, today I may not, I may not have heard your, your question about right. dividing roles within the home. Given that women are living on their own and taking your argument to its logical conclusion, what should they do? Who helps them? Well, clearly men should come in and do all their housework. OK, thanks. Nikki, what do you think? Yeah, well, I was just about to say, when I was a professional dominatrix, men used to pay me to clean my house, and I thought that was quite a good solution too. <laughs> I think that's a great place to end this interview, don't you? It's good to talk to both of you. Thank you very much indeed for joining <laughs> So anyway, a few weeks ago, I almost drowned. I was at this lake having my first swim of the summer. There is this, like, jumping platform thingy that everybody was jumping off. So I thought, what the hell, I might as well try it too. It looked like fun. Apparently, I hit my head on the way down and I was knocked unconscious. I woke up lying on my back, back up on the platform, with a whole bunch of people standing around me. And this weird 40-year-old something, 40-year-old guy, like, pressing down on my chest. At first, I had no idea what was going on. But then the man who had revived me told me that I had been underwater for almost two minutes. He said that he had been lucky to get a hold of me down there. A small part of me was happy to be alive, but the rest of me was screaming inside. I can't believe he just felt that he had the right to just grab me under the water while I was knocked unconscious. I wasn't able to consent. He thought it was perfectly okay to just grab my body and pull me in whatever direction that he pleased. He possessed my body, and he grabbed my waist and pulled me around down there like it was his right. Like he wanted to fucking have sex with me down there in the water. Fucking aquatic sex. I feel so violated. I can't believe it. He raped me. So now, 
I'm suing him for rape for what he did to me. Yeah, sure, he saved me from drowning, but it doesn't excuse what he did to me down there. If we excuse people like this, it is a fast and slippery slope before we start excusing people like child molesters and murderers. He raped me. He put his hands on me without my consent, and by definition, that is rape. I know a lot of you misogynists are going to be like, Murder! He saved your life! You should be grateful! And yeah, I mean, it was a nice thing to do, saving my life and all, but he still raped me.